geometry video. I'm going to talk about functions and slope, and you might refer to a pre-calculus book uh, for some brushing up on the concept of functions. Um, this treatment I'm doing in this video is not meant to be a uh, real technical or uh, comprehensive mathematical review of these concepts. I hope just to give you uh, the tools necessary to succeed at a uh, calculus level physics book with a series of videos. And this first one is just kind of a warm up into uh, uh, getting you up to speed with these tools. So check out some other books and uh, stay tuned for some other videos. First, the concept of a function. The function here, f of x equals 4x plus 6. First, f of x. This does not mean f times x. This is not f times x. It's the function with a parameter of x. And the rule of calculation is whatever the x number is, we're going to multiply it by 4 and then add 6 to that result. Um, so we have this rule for calculation with x being the argument of the function. And we're going to evaluate the function for some number of x by replacing x with that number wherever uh, x appears. So if we want to know what the value of the function is when x is 3, what would we do? We're going to replace the x that's here with a 3. And we could also replace this with 3. So f, the function evaluated at 3, is going to equal 4 times 3 still plus the 6. Of course, we multiply before we add. So we get 12 plus 6. We get 18 for the value of the function. Uh, different function here, a uh, quadratic function with x squared. 2x squared minus 3x plus 4. This is a different function. Again, f of x. And if we want to know what the value of this function is when x is equal to 3, I have to replace x with 3 at this location and also at this location. So we get 2 times the quantity, 3 squared, minus 3 times 3 plus 4. In the order of operations, doing powers is more important than multiplication. It has to be done first. So first it's 3 squared. That produces the 9. Minus 3 times 3 gives us the minus 9 term. And then still the plus 4. Uh, 2 times 9 is the 18, minus 9 plus 4. This would net to minus 5, and then the 18 gives us, say, 13. So that's what we have. And <coughs> mathematicians often use uh, x as the independent variable. In physics, you will run across functions of time, functions of time. So this is a kinematic equation function of time being the initial y position plus the initial y velocity multiplied by time objects in the air plus 0.5 times acceleration in t squared or if, if you want to change this to uh, uh, an x motion this could be vertical with the y displayed here but it, it also works for x motion if there's acceleration and we'd have x naught plus the initial velocity in the x direction multiplied by the time of the acceleration is constant and 0.5 acceleration in the x direction t squared. Uh, in the y equation, this function f of t, the y would go here and on a graph t would be the independent variable on the horizontal axis and y would be the vertical variable on the graph. So we have functions f of x or f of t and it could be f of a lot of things uh, some parameter that the uh, uh, function depends on um, the independent variable goes on the horizontal scale of a graph and the dependent variable the f of something uh, is your y variable your vertical scale on the graph so what about making graphs of functions? Graphs are very useful because they give us a picture of the function. We get sort of an overall view of the behavior of the function. So this first one here, f of x equals 4x plus 6. Of course, that's a linear function because x is to the first power. And you don't need it, but you could put in the power of 1 
for the x, just 4x plus 6, it's understood that the power is a 1 if it's not written. If the power is something else, 2 or minus 1, it'll uh, uh, be written in the power position. So x is our independent variable again here, and the f of x would be the y-coordinate. And we can make a graph of this function. Well, I have one here produced from uh, the website graphsketch.com. And in this uh, function, our x-axis is uh, on this scale, the y-axis running up and down. We're graphing 4x plus 6. And we would simply choose, if we're doing this by hand, choose various x values. So if I choose a 0, I get f of x is 6, and I plot a dot there. If I choose a 1 for x, f of 1 would be 4 times 1 plus 6, and we'd plot it at 10. If I choose 2, f of 2, evaluate the function for the case of x equals 2. I replace x with 2, I get 8 for the multiplication, plus 6 is 14, and we plot a dot up here, and so forth and so on. The computer does that for us. Um, graphsketch.com websites where I made that particular one. So that's making the graph of a function. We get an overall view of what the function is, uh, how it's behaving. Now, what about slope? Slope is an indication of how fast the y variable is changing or how fast the function is changing, f of x, as x changes. And one way that the graph can help us determine the slope is just to do delta y over delta x. So delta y over delta x. I have, in this case, a straight line. So I need to choose two points on the line. And you should choose these points widely spaced. Don't choose them real close together. Choose them widely spaced. Choose them at places where you can easily read the coordinates. So this first one is at 0, 6. And this one we're at 3, 18 for the point that I've uh, circled there. And doing delta y over delta x, that's going to be a change in y of 18 minus 6 and a change of x of 3 minus 0. That gives us 12 over 3, gives us 4 for the slope. And there be some units on this. We're just doing the numbers. But 4 is the slope found by doing delta y over delta x. Rise over run. It's another way to uh, remember that. Another way to do the, for the linear function is to compare the function to the standard form for a linear function. y equals mx plus b. So if down here I put y equals mx plus b. The m represents the slope value just by traditional symbols with mathematicians. m is the slope, b is the y-intercept, and we have y equals 4x plus 6, f of x is the y. As long as we do have a 1 out in front, this will work. If we have 1 times y, then the number in front of x to the first power, that's your slope. This only works for linear functions where we have x to the first power. And our slope value is 4, just as we found from delta y over delta x. Um, so that's good. In the next video, I'll show you how you use calculus to determine the, uh, the slope. But we're not doing calculus here. So we've seen that graph. We've plotted points or let a computer plot it. Delta y over delta x gives us a slope of 4. Y equals mx plus b tells us the slope is 4. A little bit more involved are the nonlinear functions. So the nonlinear functions. And there are still methods of finding the slope here, though you need to be a little bit more careful. Um, we can still do delta y over delta x, but we're going to have to let delta x head towards 0. Delta x has to become small, and I'll show that in just a minute. Or we can have a graph of the function and draw a line that is tangent to the graph of the function at the particular location where we want to know the slope and calculate the slope of that tangent line. That will be the slope of the function at that particular point. And then in the next video, again, I'll show you how you apply calculus to that. So let's work on this for the, uh, for the case of the function. If we're going to make the graph, first we would want to generate a table of values for the uh, function. 
So if we choose some x values, starting with x equals 0 is a convenient one. If I put 0 every place x appears, I get a 4. If I put in 0.5, use your calculator, this will turn out to be 3 for the calculation. Let's do 1 by in our head here. If x is a 1, I'm going to have a 2, minus 3, that's a net of minus 1, plus a 4, that'll be a 3, and so forth and so on. I've used a calculator and I found the uh, uh, f of x values for particular x's. And you could do some other x values if you want. Um, again, I've let the computer um, plot this, and we get this parabola, a quadratic function, and I'll show you the x-axis down here. Again, we're plotting 2x squared minus 3x plus 4, and we have these uh, values. So if I want to determine the uh, slope at this point of x equals 2, by using a delta y over delta x method, I could use the x point 2 and the x point of 4 and find the slope of this line. And then I could use the x of 2 and x of 3. The delta x would now just be 1 instead of 2 units and calculate that slope. And I could use an x of 2 and an x of 2.5. The delta x is now 0.5. An x of 2 and an x of 2.25 and calculate the slope of that line. It's too crowded to draw all those lines in here, so I'm just going to give you the results of calculating those straight line slopes. If we want to answer the question, what's the slope of that f of x, this quadratic, at x equals 2? So I've done the calculations here, and you could repeat some of these on your own to convince yourself that this is uh, true. We're doing the function f of x equals 2x squared minus 3x plus 4. And I have the table of values here for the different x's, the different y's, the f of x. So if I use 2 and 4, the y values, the, at x of 4, the y is 24. At x of 2, the y is 6. So I do 24 minus 6 to get the delta y. And then the... Uh, two x's were 4 and 2, so that's our delta x. 18 divided by 2, I get a slope of 9. If I choose a smaller delta x, I get a different slope, and it turns out to be 7. If I use a smaller delta x, I get a slope of 6. If I use a smaller delta x, I get a slope of 5.5, and the last one I chose to do here was 5.2. But if you want to use your calculator and do some other calculations, make this 2.05, make it 2.01, and calculate the slope. Do you see any kind of trend? Are we reaching sort of a, a place where the slope value isn't changing as much? We change two units here, one unit here, half a unit, 0.3 units, and we're approaching 5. If you would make delta x become smaller and smaller, you'll get numbers closer and closer to 5. Um, the next way I'm going to illustrate finding the slope is on this graph, I'm going to draw the tangent line, a line that just grazes the graph at the point we're interested, and then I'm going to calculate the slope of that tangent line. So here's our, our graph. Here's the point I'm interested in. What is the value of the slope? when uh, x is equal to 2. So I'm going to bring in a, a straight edge here, and I want to draw a line here that just grazes the graph, and I have equal spacing between the straight line and the function on both sides of this dot. So I'll try to kind of do that. Um, just want to graze here. Let's see what this produces. And making graphs is always inaccurate, but um, it might get relatively close, so I'm going to choose this point, and let's choose this point. Those are places where I can easily read the coordinates. This is the tangent line. It's a line that just grazes the graph with somewhat equal spacing on both sides of my dot. So the coordinates here, let's see, we've got 11 and this is an x value of 3, and down here, 1 and 1. So look at that, 10 over 2, we get a slope of 5 for this tangent line. 
Okay, that's using the graphical method of drawing the tangent line. The next video will be the calculus method of uh, determining the, uh, the slope, and that will give, again, 5. I'm going to use the same function in the next, uh, uh, next video. But I just wanted to introduce functions here. Uh, this one is f of x equals 2x squared minus 3x plus 4. Again, to make a graph, you just select various x values enough until you can make a good graph. For each x value, replace x in the definition of the function with that number. That calculates then f of x, which is the y-coordinate on your graph. For a quadratic, you'll get a parabola. For a linear function, <coughs> you'll get a straight line. The linear function, this slope is 4. I calculated here and here. What do you think would be the slope if I chose points here and here, or here and here, where my fingers are? We get the same number. For a linear function, the slope is constant. The slope is always the same. The slope is just 4. For a quadratic function, the slope is different at different places. If we would put on a... Uh, um, different tangent line. Hopefully you can see the edge of this uh, protractor is has a slope that's different than what we did here at x equals 2. So we would get different values of the slope. The slope is changing. This is a curve and not a straight line. So we'll illustrate that in the next video. Um, keep practicing and read that pre-calculus book.